Hi, my name is Farah and I'm from Egypt. Please like and subscribe. I was born in the wealthiest household in our town and I was raised by my single mom, who I absolutely adored. Mom had an untreatable eye condition and even with her special glasses, she could only see partly. But that wasn't mom's biggest problem. Her biggest weakness was that she had a heart of gold and she trusted everyone blindly. Like once when I was six, I'd just come back from school when I found a woman in a wheelchair weeping in our garden. And mom was crying too. What's wrong, mom? Oh, this poor woman. She lost her house in a fire and she can't even work because her leg got burnt. Go get my checkbook, honey. I looked over at the woman as she quickly pulled down her skirt and I instantly felt suspicious. I leapt forward and pulled her skirt back. Her skin isn't burnt, mom. That's Play-Doh. She's just making a fool out of you. The woman suddenly leapt up from the wheelchair and ran at the speed of light. Growing up, I started noticing that many people tried to fool mom because everyone in town knew about her eyesight and her soft heart. Well, they weren't getting away with it. Not on my watch. Life was going good. Till one day in ninth grade, I was running outside my house when suddenly I bumped straight into a woman and she fell down. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you. But she just pushed me aside and started walking to my house. Hey, why are you going to my house? I already said I'm sorry. There's no need to create a scene. But she just started banging on the door loudly and pushed the servant aside to let herself in. I was about to yell at her when suddenly mom appeared in the hallway and the woman ran to her shouting, Oh, my dear cousin, it's been so long since I've seen you. Cousin? Jamel, is that really you? Wow, we haven't met in a decade. Yes, yes, it's me. Oh, cousin, I've suffered so much since we last met. My husband divorced me and I have no money. I've just recently moved here to look for work. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Jamel. I can hire you as a cleaner and a cook if you want. And you must not waste money on rent. There's a small cottage in the backyard that's empty. Oh my God, what was mom doing? Oh, I wouldn't dream of being a burden on you. Yes, that's right, you shouldn't. But since you're insisting and I really care about you, I'll shift immediately to look after your home. Once the woman left, I tried reasoning with mom, but she insisted that she had to help her cousin. And before I knew it, she was moving in with her things. It turned out that she also had a daughter my age named Samar. Mom invited the two for dinner on their first day, and Samar just avoided making eye contact, and she wouldn't utter a word. My poor baby, she's just been through so much. Her dad left without even saying goodbye to her, and she's really taken it to heart. She did look quite sad, and I felt sorry for her. I tried talking to her a few times, but she'd always run off like a scared rabbit. Jamel Auntie started working at our house and I had to admit she was an excellent cook. She was really bossy and took over all the chores, but mom didn't seem to mind. For some reason, she even seemed to enjoy Jamel Auntie's company. So I stayed quiet. A few days before the end of summer vacation, I was reading one of my new course books when I caught Samar staring at me and Jamel Auntie suddenly spoke. Oh, Farah, how lucky you are. I've always wanted to send Samar to a really good school, but it's never been possible. Things got so bad last year that I just took her out. Samar isn't enrolled in school? Why didn't you say so before? I'll have her admitted to Farah's school first thing tomorrow. Oh, you've already done so much for us. Yes, Mom. I'm sure Samar can go to a good public school with Jamal Auntie's salary. But since you think of Samar like your own daughter, of course I can't say no. Ugh, this woman. I knew that she was just taking advantage of mom, but I felt like a brat saying mom shouldn't send Samar to my school, so I let it go. Maybe it would be good for her. All the way to school, Samar was silent, and I was sure she must be nervous. But when we entered the classroom, suddenly she tossed her bag onto a table, flipped her hair back, and climbed onto a chair. Hey guys, you must all be wondering who the new pretty girl is, right? I'm Samar, and I can't wait to be friends with y'all. I stared at her in shock. What just happened to the scared, shy girl at home? I decided to confront her during recess, and I found her in the cafeteria sitting right next to frickin' Marwa. Marwa was the meanest girl in class and my biggest racing rival. 
And now, she seemed to be Samar's best friend. I walked up to Samar, grabbed her arm, and dragged her off to a corner. Would you mind explaining your sudden transformation? Why have you been acting like a mouse at home all this time? Because I love acting, and I was playing the role of a sad, poor little girl. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I? You seem mental to me. And just stay away from Mara. She's not a nice person. She's my biggest enemy. But she's not my enemy. And with that, she just turned around and left. I was still in shock. Who was this girl? Later that day during sports class, I was out on the racing track practicing for a big game when suddenly I slipped over some marbles and came crashing to the ground. That's when I spotted Marwa and her gang laughing their heads off. You're so pathetic, Marwa, trying to get me out of the race so I can't beat you. Wow, you're such a genius. And yeah, all I care about is winning. I don't care how I do it. I felt so mad that I picked up a football lying nearby and threw it straight at her face. Suddenly, all the kids on the ground got divided into two teams, mine and Marwa's, and we started throwing balls at each other. And it made me so mad to see Samar attacking me the most enthusiastically. Such a snake! We were all called to the principal's office and got detention for a week. But when we got home and mom asked Samar how her first day was, she just went back to her fake personality and only smiled and nodded silently. Oh. My. God. Stop doing that, you psycho. Go on, tell mom how you're already friends with a bully. And mom, she speaks just fine too. This is all acting. Samar's lips started to shake and she burst into tears. Farah, maybe you think my daughter isn't good enough to go to your school, but you don't have to treat her this way. She's been through a lot. Cut it out, Jamal auntie. You must know the truth about her too. That's enough, Farah. I didn't raise you to be a bully. Look at the poor child. She's so upset. But mom, not another word. Just go to your room, please. I stormed off, feeling furious. Did mom have to be so blind? Having those two in my life was becoming almost unbearable. It was bad enough having Samar in my class. And at home, Jamal auntie had started acting like she owned the place. Once I was sleeping late on the weekend, and suddenly someone pulled my bed sheet from under me, making me land on the floor. It was Jamal auntie and Samar. What do you think you're doing? I have a load of laundry and I can't wait for your highness any longer. Have you forgotten that you work here? Yeah, yeah, I do what I like. But one day, she went too far. Mom and I had gone out, and when we got back home, we found her shouting at my old nanny. Go away now, shoot. I know you've just come begging for money. It doesn't grow on trees, you know. You poor people are like blood-sucking mosquitoes. I felt furious, and for once, Mom got really mad too. Jamel, she's Farah's old nanny, and she's always welcome here. You cannot turn away my guests and talk to them that way. I'm the mistress of this house, not you. And suddenly, Jamal auntie fell down to the ground and started wailing loud enough for the whole neighborhood to hear. I, I'm the one who cooks for you. I clean your stinky toilets. I sweep, I mop, I wash your dirty undies. And you're talking to me this way? A poor widow who slaves all day long for you, your own cousin. I was sure mom would kick her out now. But instead, mom looked scared and she started apologizing to aunt until she calmed down. Once she left, I turned to mom angrily. Mom, are you crazy? Tell her to leave. Why are you putting up with this toxic woman? Farah, she's my cousin and she is a poor widow. I can't just throw her out. And she's a really good worker too. But she's ruling over our lives, mom. So she's a little bossy and controlling. It's okay, I'll talk to her nicely when she's less upset. Unbelievable. I was still in a bad mood the next day, and I decided to blow off some steam by running. But when I got to the playground, suddenly a football hit me in the head out of nowhere. Ow! Someone held out a hand to me, and I looked up to see a boy. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't do it on purpose. When he saw that I was having trouble getting up, he suddenly swept me up in his arms. What do you think you're doing? Put me down. I was just trying to help you. I didn't ask for it. He put me down and I pushed him aside and walked away. What a weirdo. But after that day, 
I seemed to notice him everywhere, and he always seemed to be watching me. One day, I was putting my things in the locker when I caught him peeping at me from behind the wall. I got so annoyed that I went up to him and grabbed him by the collar. What do you want, weirdo? I've had enough of your stares. But just then, Marwa appeared with Samar out of nowhere and pushed me aside. How dare you touch my cousin, Marwa. It's okay, it isn't her fault. Cousin? He's your cousin? Yeah, he's Marwa's cousin and my close friend. Your friend? Since when? Now it makes sense why he's a creep. He's related to you, Marwa. Saying that, I walked off. I found out that his name was Ahmed and he had recently joined our school as a senior. Now that I knew he was Marwa's cousin, I had all the more reason to avoid him completely. A few days later, our sports coach told us about a citywide running competition, and the winner had a chance to join the national team. Of course, I signed up immediately, and Mara wasn't far behind. But I wasn't worried about her, just even more determined to win. I started preparing for it, and every time I was out on the track practicing, Ahmed would be watching me from behind the bleachers and cheering me on. Yeah! Go, Farah, go! You're the fastest! He didn't even seem to be bothered by the death glares Marwa and Samar gave him, but he still made me so angry that I wanted to punch him in the face. Why was this crazy guy cheering for me? We weren't even friends. One day, I completed my track in just three minutes, which was a record. The coach patted my back while Marwa looked defeated, Samar looked mad, and Ahmed just looked happy. He congratulated me, and I just couldn't stay mad at him anymore. We became friends, and I really liked his company. We hung out often after school, and I could talk to him for hours. He proved me wrong. He wasn't like his cousin at all. One day after watching a movie with Ahmed, I came home and walked into my room to find Samar there trying on my dresses. How dare you touch my clothes without even asking me? This home and everything in it is as much mine as it is yours. No, it's not. Your mom is a maid here and you're the maid's daughter, yet somehow your mom is completely under my mom's thumb. I wouldn't be surprised if one day you two end up cooking and cleaning for us. <laughs> I know you two are evil snakes and I will never let you take over my home. How can you stop us? You don't have anyone on your side. No, not even Ahmed. You think he's actually interested in you, Farah? Oh, I see the way you look at him, and you're just jealous that he doesn't even notice you. And with that, I pushed her out of my room and locked the door. I had to find a way to get rid of these two really soon. But I pushed all thoughts of them out of my head to focus on the competition, which was just two days away. On the day of the race, I was warming up at the venue when suddenly Ahmed came running to me, looking worried and breathless. Farah, does Samar live at your house? Yeah, she does. Why? I just heard Samar telling Marwa that after you left, your mom's had a big fight, and Samar's mom threw chili powder in your mom's eyes. What? Without a second thought, I ran as fast as I could and went home. I was going to kill this woman. But when I got there, I saw through the window that mom was peacefully watching TV. She seemed to be perfectly fine. Oh my god, Ahmed had lied to me? To make me miss the competition? With angry tears flowing down my face, I went back to the venue, and the minute I spotted Ahmed, I slapped him hard in the face. So, all this time, you just pretended to be my friend so you could fool me? You lied to me about my mom so your cousin could win? What? I didn't lie, Farah. I just stormed off, refusing to hear another word. I'd always thought mom was foolish for trusting people, and now I'd done just that. Trusting Marwa's cousin was a huge mistake. I found out that Marwa had won the competition, and I left there immediately. I couldn't bear to see her win the trophy. When I got home, I didn't feel like going inside and seeing anyone. I was sitting on the swing in my garden when I heard Samar behind me. It's so much fun to be surrounded by a bunch of fools. What are you talking about? I mean, why is everyone so stupid? It was so easy to make Ahmed believe the lie about your mom. And you were foolish enough to believe him, too. What? So he didn't make it up? It was you? Duh. You're as stupid as your mom. <laughs> now wait and watch as we take over your house, Farah. I think I could easily make my blind cousin sign it over to me one day. You're right. I have been stupid and blind, but not anymore. We all turned around to see mom standing behind us 
Looking like an angry dragon, she slapped Jamal Auntie hard and threatened to get a restraining order against her. Then she had the servants throw out their belongings immediately in the street. Mom hugged me tight and apologized for not believing me earlier. I forgave her instantly as I hugged her back. I was so glad to be rid of those evil creatures, and it was just me and Mom again. The next day I went to school and looked everywhere for Ahmed, and I finally found him sitting alone in the bleachers. I ran up to him and hugged him from behind. Oh, Ahmed, I'm so sorry. I know now that you never lied to me, and I should have trusted you. Please, forgive me, and... Suddenly, Ahmed put a finger on my lips and drew me close to kiss me. It felt amazing. Did you read the news today? No, why? The competition got canceled. The judges found out that Marwa used some illegal energy booster and she was disqualified immediately. You have another shot at it, Farah. I screamed with joy and kissed him again. And a week later, I participated in the competition and won. As I stood on the stage with the winner's trophy, my heart almost burst with joy seeing Mom and Ahmed cheering me on.